I felt that I was a bad person because of the way that I felt. I felt that I was being punished for being a bad person and because of childhood experiences, um, I actually had those beliefs. I held those beliefs about myself. And it wasn't until I was sort of like 22, I think I was at university at the time, and I hit rock bottom. And I realized, you know, I, I decided that I, I didn't want to live anymore because my life was just too painful. It was just too painful to experience. It was just too painful to, to live the life that I'd lived for, for such a long time, experiencing the feelings, the extreme depths of darkness that I was just trudging through on a daily basis without anybody knowing. Because mm. I had such disregard for myself, I hid the way that I felt. So nobody knew about it and I put on a brave face for everybody I'd smile you know on the outside and then cry myself to sleep for you know endless nights years and years and years and, and nobody knew how I felt and so it was through my own investigations and through you know writing my dissertation and doing you know the work that I was doing at university that I became familiar with the feelings that I was, I was experiencing and did some, you know, scientific research into why people, why someone would feel the way that I would feel. And so then I had that light bulb moment. I'm depressed. I'm actually experiencing clinical depression. It's not that I'm a bad person. So that was a bit of a turning point for me because it meant that I could do something about it, mm. uh, which was a good thing, but it was also scary because it means leaving behind the person that, you've known for forever it means letting go of you know parts of yourself that even though it's so uncomfortable and so such an unhappy place to be you know that was my comfort zone because I knew it so well I was so incredibly familiar with it can I can I pause for a moment can I can I draw attention to what you just said because I think that's a really great point for anyone watching is that we don't even when it's so painful and so such deep suffering, there is such a deep part of us that wants to keep us there because the unknown, the unfamiliar is for so many people even more scary. Absolutely. And the other thing that I want to make mention, and I think this is because it's something I resonate with deeply and I think this is the thing, we do not know what's going on behind closed doors we don't know and I I I too I too had an incredible mask where nobody knew I didn't even I actually became so disconnected I wasn't even really aware that that wasn't me Mm. so I think for anyone watching knowing that we can never make assumptions and when somebody says I'm great it doesn't (laughs) it often doesn't mean that I mean it really doesn't Yeah, I agree with you. And that's one of the reasons why I think, you know, one of the mottos that I have adopted and and choose to live by is always being kind. You know, I I do my best and I feel that it's just part of my innate characteristic and part of my innate personality is just to be kind because you can never know what's going on behind the walls that somebody puts up. You can never know what's going on behind closed doors because people do have this ability to put on a mask for the world Mm. then when they're on their own or in, you know, the comfort of the people that they feel safest with, there could be a completely different story, a completely different presentation of, you know, who they actually are and what they're actually experiencing and going through. So I think it is a really, really important thing to draw attention to and almost kind of normalize it as well, that, that that's, you know, something that so many people experience but that doesn't mean that you have to go on experiencing life like that. It doesn't mean that, you know, because you are familiar with your suffering and because you do such a good job of masking it and hiding it and are high functioning, you know, there are so many entrepreneurs I feel that are high functioning depressives. They are able to function in their job. They're able to function in their work. They do an amazing job at what they do, but actually behind closed doors, they're incredibly, incredibly unhappy. And it's that moment of acknowledgement, acknowledging that there is actually something that's not quite right. There's something that needs some attention here. Mm. Who can I find? What can I do? What help can I get? And, and having the courage to, to reach out for help is something that I think needs to be advocated a lot more. Mm. And I think that a lot of lives could be saved through 
through making, you know, I mean, my, my, I know that you want to jump in and say, you know, kind of say something. And I just want, guess I, I want to make the point that, you know, my, my dissertation, the, the information that I was researching when I came to the understanding that it was depression that I was experiencing was because I was actually writing a research paper on depression. My, my undergraduate dissertation was on abolishing the stigmas and twos attached stigmas and taboos attached to clinical depression and mental health, mental illness. And it was while I was researching and, and understanding the symptoms and, you know, understanding what depression is, that there was just these light bulb moments just kept, it was like tick, 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 tick. It's like, that's me. Like, that's why I feel the way that I feel is because I'm clinically depressed.